this session is SEO and a post penguin. Hustle swimming fits in a post penguin. Does anybody know what that means, post penguin? Uh, yeah. SEO world? <laughs> that guy? You. That's your penguin. No, it's just no word. Okay. So penguin was the name is the name of Google. I'm not an expert in this, so I'm gonna just kind of share what I know. Penguin is the name of an update that it applied to its search algorithm to basically stop people from cheating and spamming and basically all the people who spend a lot of time figuring out how to get page rank um, organic in organic search, they, they, they released this update to kind of nerf certain uh, activities that would you know, help people get ahead. Google wants Google wants organic to be very organic in terms of relevance, relevance to people, relevance to you, relevant to your browser and how you how you use your cookies and all that stuff. So that's what the penguin update is. So the conversation was going to be how do you still try to cheat at getting organic rank in Google in a post penguin world, right? So um, how do we how do how can we do that? So I maybe mean, I can talk about an example that I have. How um, how many people here have a blog? Everybody, oh, awesome. And how, how often, uh, and so is your goal, like, yeah, what, so let's find out some goals. What, what is your goal in terms of being in a session? What do you want to get out of it? You want to learn how to make your blog rank? You want to rank for your business? You want to rank for a product, something to sell? What's, what's your goal? I'm um, new to it all. Okay. So my goal is to um, learn how to get exposure and more blog followers. Okay, cool. In relation to my small business. All right, all right, so you have a small business that wants to get their blog out there. Anybody else have a different goal, a different reason? I have a customer reason that have websites. And I, I don't know anything about the new search, um, you know, the, the new um, criteria that they look through to see. Because it used to be, you know, keywords and you know, putting stuff in your text and how much you updated your page. And that is some totally what I know it used to yeah. be. And then I knew they changed it. <laughs> okay, cool. All right, so want to learn more about this? Anybody else? <clears throat> I go, this is, oh, yeah. I, I was particularly interested in, in social media and how social media posts and things affect us. So. Okay, cool. All right. All right, so I'm coming into this cold, by the way, so I wasn't prepared <laughs> to talk about Penguin and, and Google, but <clears throat> I think what you would never hear what, what was your name? Seal. Seal. She said about, okay. Oh, using your blog is using a blog is, in my opinion, the best way to achieve organic search. Penguin algorithm, Google, Yahoo, Bing, whatever doesn't matter. Um, I think that I mean you can target those. You get really, really nerdy, nitty gritty about how does Google work, how do how do all these social networks work. Um, but you know, at, when you're just starting out and you have some content that you you, you really just need to get out there and really start to gain some traction, a blog is the best is the best way. Uh, a couple of reasons. Frequency, um, how often you control how often you post and how often you ping those um, those social networks. Um, when when you when you create a new post, you're adding new content to your website. Uh, whether that's a you know a paragraph or a one sentence, you are literally putting new content on your website. So as Google crawls your website and as it as it indexes you, because um, it indexes the whole web, um, it knows that you have new content. So if you post twice a day or once a week, Google's, that's how often Google is going to come back. It's, it's going to know how often you post throughout the, your history. Yeah. Do you know if it matters if you've got a blog that's linked, like if you have WordPress link into your regular main blog, say I've got it posted somewhere, and then I start a blog, and I have maybe a blog section on my host page that links there to my WordPress blog, does Google crawl that the same way as if I'm actually posting the blog post I think it. There, I think in it, if you if you I think you can if you tell Google if like you index you have to, if you have a site map that has a, a like a link hierarchy of all of that content, you can't tell Google that you're all one one website. But if you don't, um, it would look at it as two different websites. Um, so, like to get to get back to what I was saying, so. That, if you only post once a month, Google is going to know that you only post once a month. It's only going to refresh your site in its index once a month. If you post twice a week, or I'm sorry, twice a day, 
it might it's going to refresh every day. So, um, like a really good example is when I don't remember what Pit Girl when she stopped blogging, she posted a couple times a day or at least once a day. And when she decided to take her blog down about four years ago, Google refreshed it instantly because she was con she was posting so often it, it immediately refreshed it, and her whole archive was like totally gone. And it was so weird because everyone was like, "Well, where's the archive? Where's the archive?" But she, they were her my boyfriend was swear about it. They just they did it. It was kind of a cool little trick. And um, but that but in the opposite direction where where most people want to go is you're going to push content out there. So Google's going to know you post a lot, so you're relevant, you're active. Okay, so that's that's number one. Number two is uh, with the blog, you're able to get really really specific about the content that you're uh, writing. Like so, it's very relevant. Um, so if you're, what's what's your business? Oh, I do custom party decor. Party decor. Okay, so if you, so you can break that down in a lot of different categories, I'm sure. So if you want to target maybe moms who are throwing a birthday party for a, a child that they have, you can get really really specific about um, you know what they can do, party ideas, you know, the whole nine yards. Versus that might, you know, that content is for that audience, and you can really write at that audience, and you can maybe have <coughs> try to carve out a couple of different audiences within your blog that are really targeted because that, the best blog is the blog that is really specific, really, really content focused. So, so where we're going, why this is important is it's all about relevance. What does Google want? It wants to give its users, people are doing searches, the most relevant content. So you're able to write really, really relevant content, tag it, categorize it for your, for your people. Um, there's some other tricks like name your posts, like really specific, like if you want to get a keyword, um, you know, parties for kids. I don't know, party neighbors for kids. I don't know. Uh, name, name, name. You can name your posts, um, especially with WordPress and how URLs can work. You really name the title of the post, um, so the URL is something that's really, really keyword specific, and you want to write about those keywords. Um, some of the clients that I have, and some of the like when we're doing this, we're talking about content marketing. Yeah. They, they're like, well, we want to promote our catering menu. Well, you know, just writing about catering or sh sharing a menu isn't that isn't that specific enough. Like, you want to really drill down and, um, uh, you know, like this type of food item catering your type of party. You know, like really, really specific because that's what people are they're googling and um, that's what people are searching for. So. Um, trying to uh, so yeah, so. So you can use, so you can create like the title of your post and then the URL and use those keywords uh, to, to to really get specific. And WordPress makes that really easy. Um, and uh, so okay, so that you can. There's other tricks like um, if you have an image that you, uh, Sean and I have talked about this a number of times. Uh, if you use, if you have a great photo and it's called image zero one eight two three one. Okay, well, whatever. It doesn't matter. You just upload it. People look at it. Rename that image party favors for this target keyword. Um, you know, it doesn't matter how long it is, just rename it your keywords when you and then title it and tag that photo in the meta of the post. You know, it's not hard, it's not that hard to do. WordPress makes it easy, just learn how to do that. And um, it, there's another little, you know, it's not gonna like huge edge rank, but you're inching your way closer to relevance. And uh, one thing, and I, this this is a question I wish um, Man was here for because she might know the answer. It used to be that in a blog post, the first link, that the first hyperlink in your post was super, super relevant, like really, really high. And this is, um, if, if you get the guy doing registration, like Mike Mons, he is an SEO, like super genius, even though he comes off as a little, like, kind of hyper. So uh, he, he might know the answer to this. Um, but that, that's one trick that I always did when I was, when I was writing a blog every day. Um, is just really focus on making the keyword or the keywords the first URL in my post. And then that tells Google that number one, your title is the name of that keyword. Your first keyword is linking, sometimes to my own content, but mostly I was linking out. I was going out somewhere else that was also tagged as that keyword. So Google sees, okay, this keyword is a hyperlink that's to another really relevant thing. So now the relevant circle starts to come around. Um, and then other you and then it starts. It looks at your other URLs too. So um, when you when you say, oh, click here for this form, and you tag the word here, well, that's not really telling you anything. Like 
awesome party favors should be you know the URL. People people are savvy enough to know what URLs and where when to click, and um, your theme should be a visual indicator, so people know where the links are in your, your post. Um, if you have an image, make that in, make sure that image is the is, is the hyperlink. So um, so be 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 mindful, be thoughtful of that, um, and that will help you edge edge your way up in there in your relevance. Um, so it's frequency and building that relevance, and then um, so social media, right? It's important to have a blog because that's your hub. Uh, you know, I think this this statement gets tired, but if you haven't heard before, it's really important. When you um, when you don't have your own website, when you don't own your own web space, you don't own your content. I mean, if you're just on Facebook, like Pittsburgh Dad, like they're just on YouTube. I mean, they're kind of doing a different thing. They're on their own path, they're fine. But what happens if you know a rocket hits a Google office somewhere, or not a rocket, uh, uh, a meteorite hits hits you know the the building, or or Google says you know what we're tired of web video, we're going to do web 3D, but we're going to delete YouTube because we're moving on. That uh, that's you know not maybe a real sick scenario, but you know, something could happen. Google could say oh you know what we're going to make everything pay paywall now. All your content that you've been uploading, you got to pay for that to get it back now. So that can go away. Yeah. I was going to say, a specific example that happened recently is when Facebook, maybe two years ago, when, when everybody was paying designers to create those custom landing pages, and it would say, so when you got there and they could, you could set it so the first time somebody came to your page, it would have that splashy design look to it. Yeah. And then when they moved over to the cover photo stuff, I, mean, I think people paid thousands, you know, at least some money to get those done for their businesses. And then Facebook goes, oh, we're doing a new design, and it's gone. Yeah. You know, so, so you, you, and it's all like they're That's a back. really, really good thing. Yeah, I mean, cause, and the, I think Facebook intentionally did that because they were becoming everybody's website. And they, that's not their goal. That's not their, their mission. And so they, they wanted to invert that. I think that was, I was listening to a Social Pros podcast recently where they were talking about, talking about that situation where why did Facebook do that? Because um, they don't want to be people's websites because that's one of the things they do. But when you do, yeah, so that's, that's a good example of own your own content. And you know, you're trying to chase the carrot in terms of where the people are, um, but have your home base first. That way, any content you create, you, you can link back to that. Um, and you own it, and you're in control of it, you're 100% in control of it. So, um, that, that's, that, 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 and it goes back to building your whole brand. And then Google has, um, this is where my expertise of Google and SEO and analytics kind of starts to get all thick because I haven't managed that many projects in this realm. But <clears throat> you can you can link your social activity in Google Analytics and track it. So make sure your websites and your blogs are set up with web, Google's SEO webmaster tools. Um, if you can get a plug if you have a WordPress site, you can get a plugin called um, XML Generator. So not generator, it generates an XML file. Of your website, and what that is is just it's it's literally just like a, a code version of a boring outline of your website with every single page and every single piece of content. And you tell when you register with Webmaster Tools, you register your site with Webmaster Tools, you tell Google where that URL is to that file, and then any, and then that's how Google knows when it crawls you. It knows exactly what's your new content, when it was updated, etc. Um, Google's also doing some stuff. I think this is a Penguin thing. Um, where did your content get published first? So if you're a person who's trying to like do these crazy content farms and replicate content across the whole blog post, and you're all linking back to one site, which you're <clears throat> trying to raise your link value up. By the way, people linking to you from other websites is still really, really relevant to Google. So having people link to you from somewhere else is important, because that shows that you're relevant. I think I found Justin's PowerPoint, if you'd like to go from that and some of little um, well. I think I'm on my own path right now. Okay. But I'll put it to SlideShare and then we'll put it on the website. If it, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but um, so that is so, so that's so that's relevant. Um, so and then so using Google Webmaster Tools and this is all stuff that's free, and, and Bing and Yahoo have similar services in terms of free Webmaster Tools, site indexing. I was going to add too, the linking is that if you're just starting a blog, and it, this has changed, I think it's got diluted, but it's, it's sort of a more relationship than search, is it, 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 nobody does this, but it also gives you, like if I, if I would link to something that Mark did, um, I could take an extra second email and say, hey, I just want to let you know I linked to one of your posts and, and one of my posts, and then that's going to increase the likelihood that, you, and then hopefully, 
hopefully he'll link back to me at some point. But 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 really focus on the relationship. But but I, I've probably only seen a few people ever do that. But it really really helps because I'm like, oh, what'd you link to? And then I go look at their post, and then of course I'm going to share it. So it starts to really so those links. Even if you look at back at your analytics, like how much time people spend on your, sometimes I'll get lazy and I won't link to some of my other posts. So once they come in, they'll leave, right? So then I'll be like, oh, I better go in there and put some links to some other posts, to, to some Mark stuff or what, to some of Norm stuff. And so, you know, because you also want to look at how long they're there. Because a lot of your web traffic is, is like, when I look at my analytics, lots of garbage. Like there's a click and they're there for a second. And so it's a robot or spider or something. So I'm really focused on once they're there, how can I get them there and keep them there as long as I can. In indexing your site with Google reduces the amount of times that they have to click your website yeah. virtually. So it, it, it eliminates the those those hits that aren't really hits, by the, um, at least for Google. You know, sort of um, also, so once you set up your webmaster tools, link link them to analytics um, go through your google analytics and make sure that you can link your link your accounts together if you're running an adwords campaign link all that stuff together so that way when you go to analytics you can really get an awesome picture about what's happening on your website it's one of my the best things to do is to pull up google analytics this is my favorite thing and look at key the keywords that what people are certain like well how did someone actually land on my website and how like what did they get well, what were they googling to get to me, and sometimes it's random, crazy stuff, and a, a lot of times it's you know they were actually you can see like the PodCamp Pittsburgh, for example, most of the people who are did a Google search and got to PodCamp because they were really looking for PodCamp. They did our the hat and searched the hashtag or they searched PodCamp Pittsburgh or some variation of those words. That's like the top ten and twenty returns, but then we got other stuff. You know, people looking for you know other information. We try to make them more of a resource you know out, outside of our event, but um, you know. Or you could, someone maybe came in like for like they were searching bananas, right? And how did they come? And like there were ten people who found hightickpittsburgh.com because of a little banana search. Well, you know maybe there was a photo that some people that had a banana in it. And it was tagged banana. I don't know, but it's you know it, it could be working. I mean that's an off the wall example, but then you get okay. So but how does that become relevant? Which is important and why it's exciting. Because the goal is you're you're you're. You're writing about keywords and key search phrases that um, you want people to find your site with, and maybe the strategy that you're using isn't working, or maybe there's just too, or maybe there's an oversaturated keyword, um, you know, like baseball or just parties. You know, it might be hard to rank with very basic. That's why it's really good to get really, really specific with your blog, your blog post, and tagging your content and going after unique keywords. Um, because you'll see, you'll, well, maybe you know, 15 down, you found there are a couple of people who found your site for something that was relevant to your business, that's interesting to you, but you didn't write about it. It wasn't, it wasn't something that you actually were creating content about. You know, that's a key. That's a key to you. Like, use that and say, okay, let me explore this. Let me write a couple of blog posts about this this topic, and I tag it and do that. And see if we can get more traction there. So that's how you start to grow uh, and build uh, a wider audience and. In a, in a very relevant way because they're they're already finding you, they already find you relevant at least for a click. Um, so yeah, so make sure you link all that stuff together, and then when you do pull an analytics report, you can see how everything's coming together. You can get really really specific about about that. So I mean I don't dive into analytics right now, but it's a really cool tool. So um, and so let's see, let's see one second. So like. Uh, all you know, so so that's kind of like the the picture of like you know that's Google's tools and your blog and how you can get really really um, get ranked and it takes time. I would say if you're going to launch a brand new blog today um, and you want to get to maybe a thousand hits a day, it's going to be if, if you write every day, it's going to be three to four months, and you're, it's going to be slow. And your first month, maybe you're going to get fifty hits. Come on, next month it might be one hundred fifty. But if you're doing a good job about writing content every day, writing relevant content, that's it's going to grow. You're going to begin to start to do it. I did it with the site this year, uh, Day of the Girl Summit.com. Um, it was it's a brand new event, Day of the Girl, and uh, a really great cause. You know, ask me about it later if you want to know more. But we went from zero to three thousand hits on the day that we celebrated Day of the Girl, and about a month. And I mean, there were a lot of other organizations participating, and a lot of other factors that went into it. But we we were writing a lot of relevant content, and we were really using social media to drive that, which I'm getting to. 
which you have a question? No. Okay. Sorry, I thought you had your hand up there. So, okay, so social media, which I think comes not only down to the social networks and Twitter, but also how you're interacting with other people, because that's really what social media is all about. It's your interact, interactions, your relationships with other people. Um, way back when, like PodCamp 1 or 2, the best way to build a blog was to go out and find other blogs just like yours and comment on them. Or maybe not, just go out to other blogs in the world and just write a comment. Just and, and be human about it. You're like, oh, I read this, great post, high five. Whatever, or whatever, or just, or, or you know, maybe, maybe you have a comment about the related topic. When you do that, make sure you fill out your name, your URL, and all that stuff in the comment form, because now you just create a link back to your website, and then someone else might be able to get in on that conversation. So maybe you end up having a little bit of a conversation on somebody else's blog, but whatever. Well, now you just create, you know, like now because I don't. Is everybody getting out? Like we're creating, we're creating relationships, and so then you then you start to find other people who are, are doing that. They're gonna go check you out because maybe they want to just maybe you have to start to comment. They're like, no, I'm gonna go back and get that, or or maybe you know, or maybe they just want to check out your content, and then that's how that's how you start to build a circle of you know links and, and relevancy um, to your website, and then how does that extend into social networking? This is where my knowledge is a little foggy about if you post a URL on Facebook. To your to your site, I don't know how that how Google actually does that, or Twitter. I do know that Google knows and can tell you really specifically how many people are coming from Facebook, how many people are coming from Twitter. Twitter is the number one inbound source of traffic to the podcast and Facebook website. It's obvious because we spend. I mean, it's not, it's obvious to me. We spend most time talking about podcast on Twitter um, than rather we do on Facebook. Uh, so. It's easy. We have like all the organizers are tweeting as podcast, so I mean, it's, it's easy to have like tons of conversations happening. Uh, you know, podcast may be a, a unique example, but you know, if you have a business, you just talk about your business. Make time to schedule. I mean, you really, really schedule time to write tweets and think about it strategically, like you're thinking about how often you're posting to your blog. So it starts to build, and then yeah, and then you have take time to have human interactions with people on Twitter. Um, Someone said something to me that was really great about like you gotta think about Twitter and Facebook differently. Uh, this is a philosophy, not the philosophy. But it's like Facebook or Twitter for this person was a conversation that just kind of happens in the now. You're not always reading everything that happens on Twitter, but when you do, you spend a few minutes with it. You're really re you're really communicating with the people who are communicating right now with you. Uh, where on Facebook, you might publish something and it's more of like like maybe you know this is what we're doing. It's more of an announcement space, or um, you can have like conversations in the moment, but those conversations have a little bit more longevity, whereas once something's down somebody's Twitter screen, it's gone, I mean, for the most part. I mean, maybe something can come back if, if they're relevant enough, but usually you just write a tweet and still on top. If people saw it, if they comment, great, but it's over. So, as Chachi comes in, I want, I want him to take over now. No. He's, ba he's making sure all of this technology is working. I don't know, can you hear me okay? Yeah, that's fine. You were a little bright. So, as per um, usual, I think about social media as, and SEO as um, a way to have interactions with people that lead to um, meaningful content. You're going to share your content with them out there, and then it's going to kind of like you're spidering yourself out there, and you're building relationships that lead to meaningful links, meaningful interactions, um, etc. So you can uh, you can also set it up set up your site you know if you want to get really really strategic and, and tracking what's coming in uh, with with analytics you can set goals and uh, with analytics and you you have to write like your links and your inbound you have to track your inbound through analytics in a way um, that you set you set it up again this is not my area I know it exists I know you do it you can leave cookies for people. So um, that your AdWord camp, like if they visit a page on your website that was maybe they got to like buy the supplies page and they all they needed to hit was buy now and then for some reason they didn't, but you can leave a cookie on the, in their browser that says okay, for every user who got through to the checkout page but didn't check check out, we want to show them an ad when when they're browsing the webs through through AdWords or through a Google ad campaign. So you have a custom image of a custom message that gets displayed to that and that only that user, you know, so you can really target someone 
you go to you and, and and then you know get them to fill out a form, get them to do other. There's other web marketing stuff. Like this is where we're kind of bleeding into the rest of it. So, um, I don't know. so okay. So I kind of feel like I've exhausted that my mind on that. <laughs> Any questions? Am I? Am I? Am I? Am I where, where, where are we on this side? This is where you guys take over. I should actually just be able to go. Tell you all this awesome information. And now you're going to be like, what did it all mean? We've got to figure it out. You know? Or you're going to go out there on a computer right now and you're going to get this. Well, so, Sean, I have a question. So, when you write to a blog post, do you immediately put it out on Facebook, Twitter, G? <laughs> Yeah, well, it, and I, I probably, because I think everybody's faced with there's, there's not enough time, right? So everybody's like, oh, I got to do this stuff. And so I probably am guilty of, um, I think Twitter gets going away. But Twitter was interesting, theoretically, because it would tell you, like, when the most, most of your followers are on Twitter and what's the, the best time. They, because everybody, all these algorithms, edge rank, everybody has all this data and they're trying to figure out predictably when, when you should share your content. Um, but what I'll often do is probably push it all at, all at the same time, which is usually... A Tuesday or Thursday between 10 and 11 a.m. I don't know why. I, you know, it, it, it seems to work. Um, but but I've often thought like maybe there are times where I should push, allow it a little the content to breathe a little bit. But I do change what I post. So the one thing I do from a blogging, you know, I have a session on blogging today at three, um, is uh, is really make sure I include images and in everything, especially for Facebook. There's stuff that I find that people write that's awesome content. And it's a little thing, but it's hard for me sometimes if they either have crappy images or no images. I don't want to put that through on my Facebook page, so maybe I'll tweet it. But that influences where I share it, right? Um, and uh, and so, I'll, but I'll change like um, LinkedIn. I don't do enough on. Although for when you mentioned Twitter for PodCamp, I blog for Fast Company Magazine, and we get a crap ton of traffic from LinkedIn, obviously, right? So um, that's a single source of traffic for, for at least now. Um, so so I'll try to change the little. Previews a little bit and whatever I write in that, that comment section, um, but I usually push them out all about the same time. And I do like I was I was sort of dorking out the other day and I was looking on the Google Analytics and I was curious about the um, how many times uh, people came to different to, to my site from those sites and then how much time they spent there. And I know they could just mean that they pulled up the browser and fell asleep or something, but I, I sort of like to see when people are on my site for an extended period of time. So. I was curious that, like, I think I can't remember if it was Twitter or Facebook, one of them was twice as long as the other, even though they were a similar number of hits. And then also, how many pages are they going to? Even if you're doing ads. So it's like, if you're doing Facebook ads and people go click on one page and then they leave, you know, or for whatever you're trying to accomplish, are you looking for people that go in and sort of stay around and then you get them to that page where they're going to order party supplies or whatever. So, um, so yeah, I, I, I send all my stuff out the same time, but I probably should mix it up a little. I usually push out to Twitter multiple times during the day that it's published because I think most people, like you said, know that Twitter links, you know, they know if you catch them and you're there, great, they saw it, and then, you know, if they didn't see it, I think people understand multiple pushes out to Twitter. And the prolific tweeters, like, uh, so I do small business stuff, but I think, uh, so Melinda Anderson, if she uses the chat or whatever, she's a small business lady. They'll also tweak it. So even though they'll tweet it like six different times, they'll 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 change it up. And I think different that's also hashtags. curious because you can see what now hashtags sometimes work, but that was another thing that people overdid because mm -hmm. it, it was like you know, all this stuff. It's sort of like even with social media. Uh, but there's some data from Argyle Social, which does um, social media marketing platform, and it changes over time. But they found that most of the times tweets with hashtags underperform that didn't have hashtags, really? unless they were specific. So if it's PodCamp Pittsburgh, if it's some nonprofit, but if it's, it's really just, relevant. yeah, but but it's but if it was just something like baseball or whatever, um, and that's what people were doing, people were hashtagging everything. And I actually, in the other sessions, you were talking about never hashtag on Facebook. It cracks me up. I hashtag on Facebook only because, and I'll literally type, make up hashtags in Facebook just to make it crack me up, even though I know that, you know. So I'm not going from Twitter to Facebook. I just put in random hashtags for no reason. So... Um, so, so yeah, I, I do think you can tweet multiple times. Now, um, I use uh, Discuss as my comment aggregator in um, in my blog, and it tracks that. So there's all because it, it'll show sort of the engagement, and, and, and I think it's pretty neat. Uh, but also, like if you don't get a lot of posts, the only bad part of that is it'll show um, if you don't get a lot of retweets, it'll show that you retweeted like six times. So you'll look like you're 
retweet just, you know, if Norm never retweets anything I write and I retweet it six times, it, you'll go in there and you'll see that I sit in six little pictures of my head that I retweeted it six times. So there's things like that. Like, it's not a big deal, but... Um, you might be able to filter that, actually. Yeah, but, it's, but it is a, a feature, <clears throat> but it's cool. So. I think what I found about hashtags, just from being a Twitter user, is I don't like it when it's in the little bit of the tweet, but if you hashtag at the end, it's not as bad. Like, for when you're reading the hashtags, you're like, I can't... Like, it's hard to get through all the hashtags just when you're trying to read a sentence, you know? But if they hashtag at the end, you're like, okay, well, that's, they're just doing that. Because these are the audiences they're trying to get. Yeah, and, and Norm, you know, it's something I didn't even think about. Like, I was pulling a lot of my images in my blog post from Flickr, and then, and then it's weird because that's changed with blogging platforms too. It used to be a lot of you would just pick your file from your desktop and you'd upload it, and then like Fast Company redid their content management system, so now I have to have a link, and then so it, it influences like where do I pull it, how do I do it. So I was going to Flickr, and I was just putting the in the code, I was putting the link in there, and then we're sitting there one day, and he's like. Well, not only that, but if something happened where that image was no longer on Flickr anymore, three years three years later, if, if I'm blogging and you find one of my old posts, it's like there's going to be this dead spot when there was a picture. So and now I've gotten much more. Um, and you were sending a link back, yeah, to, back Flickr. to Flickr instead of to my. It's so, a keyword, yeah. Yeah, so that's something. It's, it's a you know I take for all this stuff, but don't don't get overwhelmed by it. I mean, there's there's sites like SEO Moz, um, Google Blog has information, but that gets way techy and I don't understand it. Um, there's even a photo shelter does, uh, and, and I can even email it to say you guys, but they did a, a thing on SEO, and it's probably not the be-all, end-all, but I think it was one of the most effective, easy to understand, this is why you should do it, even though it's for photography, and you guys probably aren't all photographers, um, it was like a 30-page ebook, and I found that really, like, oh, this is what you should think about those descriptions and your page titles, and it gives you good and bad examples, so, um, so yeah, but I'd say don't, you, it, you can easily spend all your time chasing Google, and it's just it's important to be aware of this stuff, but don't have your head explode. Like yeah, blog frequently and blog often is I think the, is the, tag, tag your content and title it well. I think that that would be the number one thing, and that's not brain surgery. You've already got the platform. Tag I think don't use right? Like we um we have nonprofits who don't tag their content on their own web page and stuff, and then. All the search results just come up with the voice stuff because we take the time to go through and tag images and stuff. Yeah, and meta tags are a really big deal. Yeah, sure. Yeah, don't tell your, your competitors about this. <laughs> Is there like a recommended length of a blog post? Like if you're posting every day, you know, maybe there's not something relevant isn't happening every single day. Like, is there? Can you do a short blog post and still have it be relevant? I, I I would answer that question with. What it, what it, who's your audience? What are they expecting? And what are you, what are you delivering? Um, I wrote um, a magic blog, which is a magic gathering and trading card game for about a year and a half. And I would do all of, I would be all over the place for that. And it was awesome because if I, it was just all about whatever I, I was trying to comment on my experience with this trading card game. And so sometimes it would be like, oh man, I just found this new card, check it out. And other times it would be like, Here's my like really really long synopsis of what I played at this event and like a breakdown of everything. It took me like a long time to write before I would do a review. Um, but that I knew that in my audience, the audience of this this that I was writing to, that's how they would assimilate information to. If you're trying to write a food blog or do something, if you, what are you trying to deliver? Is it? I, I would let your goal, your vision, dictate <coughs> what is what, what is what is your need. Um, what is your need there? Um, my, if it was, if you're just asking that, I would just say, no, do whatever you feel is right, and just constantly write. Make sure you have time. And don't apologize for like not writing every day or whatever. Just write. Just constantly write. And, and well, I mean, I guess my question is, does it matter in terms of like how often your, um, you know, your crawl or, or like yes. all the oh, like, oh the length, you yeah. know, like the length of it? Because I mean, sometimes you have a lot to say, or sometimes you know you want to share something small. Which is fine. No, you I know, think the relevance is the frequency of the new content, whether that's 100 characters, 1,000, or whatever. Sometimes you sit down to write a blog post and you're like, okay, I'm here for two hours trying to find you know, nuggets of truth. Yeah, yeah. Really, you just need something to communicate to. If, if you find that you get stuck, uh, this is actually, uh, I'll talk about this later. Um, this is a book called Accidental Genius, and, this, and I don't do a lot of the exercises, but it was freeing to go through this whole idea of free writing. And, it, and I like that, because sometimes, like, 
you'll either you'll either come up with the title and then the content will follow or you're on the content and then you can't figure out the title. But I think this this allows you to sort of um, take different paths, right? Um, because you're right, like the biggest thing is when you, this is like having a kid, if you start a blog, um, I was talking to some folks at Alpha Lab Demo Day and they're a startup, so that they're like, oh, they have, they have a blog, and so I said, what do you blog about? He goes, well, really nothing, because we're a startup, and, and they're so busy trying to start up, like they don't update their Facebook, they don't update their, and they have this awesome product. And then the bad side of that is like when I have people pitching me for my blog, and they're like, hey, will you write about us or whatever? Part of it is I want to know that whatever I do is going to, they're going to help amplify it, so if I go to their website and it hasn't been updated for six months, like even if it's subconscious people, I think it just, I mean, it happens. But it, like, I, I think if you're going to do it, like once a day, Ray Bradbury, when they did a special when he passed away, like he wrote a thousand words a day. For me, that's really, really hard, right? And when I first started out, I had all these ideas blogging. Now it's been five years. And so a lot of times I'm like, oh, what am I going to write about? So one, I say pace yourself, but also keep an idea, like a, just a scrap piece of paper, a spreadsheet. So there might be things you don't write about this week, but they're going to have come in handy. So I have sort of just a, a random thing of scratches on a piece of paper of ideas so that if I don't have an idea, yeah. it fit into my content stream. Plan, yeah, planning yeah. it out. I think uh, 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 when I'm at my best when I'm blogging is when I sit, I spend some time to sit down and think, what are what are like, what are are like just topics that I want to write about? And I and I can think of you know maybe 10 or 15, and just come up with a list and then just kind of pluck at that list until... Um, so you get and get through it, and then by the time I do that list, I've got a whole bunch of other stuff. In addition to relevant content that came up in between me, including that that sort of a short list of, of stuff that I want. And then once you get into routine, then it then it just kind of flows. Um, yeah, I have a quick question. Um, I made several blogs and online magazines for clients, and uh, I think I know the answer to this. But how effective are there's tools out there that allow you to automatically post your your blog to Facebook and Twitter, like deliver it for Twitter, and there used to be a Facebook application. Yeah. Is it ever a good time to use those, or? I, I think it depends um, on who you're, I, I, don't, I don't know how it relates to like SEO, in terms of like how Google looks at that. One of the clients that I have, we, we, when we first launched their website, we had an automatic post to Facebook yeah. plugin set up. And Shortly, like real fast after we set it up, I we just I, I made a move to disable it and manually post. I don't know how many blogs you're talking. If you're talking about a lot that's unmanageable, maybe you need to automate it. But we're talking about one site, one one Facebook page, and we I, I forced my colleague to do them manually. And what that did was, and I think it, it the long term, the long tail aspect of it is a lot better because. You're able to maybe make sure that your image that you're posting is exactly what you want. Maybe it's different than what's on the website. Um, you can write a message about what this link is. You can be a little bit more human about it. Um, versus, yep, this is just a link that we, it's, it's pretty obvious when you see that. Yeah. Um, so you can say, okay, here's like the, the here's our latest, hottest news, you know. Um, you can be really, you can really speak to your audience and, um, and let them, see that and, and then yeah you can you can you have a hands-on on facebook so it, you can make that a, a more just get into the options of it a little bit better yeah. versus getting lazy because you know that it's going to automatically happen you might not even check it out you just let it happen and that's one of the things i didn't like about this our this situation with this client so um i think now we've been at this for a couple of months and we're getting a lot of we're getting all more likes now, and we're getting a lot more interaction and just activity on the Facebook page. And I think that is one one reason why we are. Um, I've got one for you though. Um, have you ever been to a blog site and you've seen like the share buttons, you know, tweet this, like this on Facebook? Uh, I just was talking to someone this week about a company, and I forget their name, who manages a newspaper in Europe, and they're their philosophy is remove all of your social share buttons immediately. It, it seems kind of counterintuitive, but the logic behind it is, is interesting. And I've, I've, I haven't had a chance to test this myself, but I think it's really, really kind of a cool approach to it. Because when, when you see, think, think about your own experience. When you see someone on Twitter or Facebook that, that texts like, like, oh my gosh, I just read this article, it blew my mind. 
just go stop what you're doing and read it now. And it's your friend, and you're like, you might click on it. You might not read it, you might not watch the video, but you might click on that link and just check it out. Where if you just see, oh, so and so liked this, or so and so retweeted this, there's less of a, I mean, it's, it's, it's you know, it's just a click on a button, it's, a, it's real easy. Yeah, they, they like that, so what? You know, I, I, you're less inclined to uh, engage with that content. Whereas, and when you remove those, so you remove the ability for people to just mindlessly share your content. Um, but you want people to share your content, there's value. So you force that person to go up, grab the URL, and paste it in. Okay, so they're gonna, they're not just gonna paste the URL, they're gonna have, they have to write something about it. So they're gonna write why they're pasting this URL. So automatically you're kind of eliminating this bland, generic, like, tweet, whatever, and you're, you're empowered, you're, you're like, Psychologically empowering those people who want to share, and it, it's going to get a, a. So I'm interested to see like how it's really going to work long term. But I, it sounded really interesting to me. Um, and I rare, I know for me personally, I rarely clear, click share on Facebook or, or retweet right from a website because I just that's me. Yeah, I don't know, it's weird. But um, if I want to, you know, so so, but that 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 psychological element is there too. Um, so yeah, and I'd say like. You don't see this often anymore, but a lot of times you can control what if they do click on the tweet button. And like the, I think Pittsburgh Parks Conservancy is still this way. So like if you if you tweet something from their site, it says like blah 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 via at WordPress or whatever WordPress is. And it, it's a little thing. I don't know how many more followers they pick up, but it's just why send them to WordPress if you want them to mention to be Parks Conservancy for a bunch of different reasons, right? So it's it's I'd say every once in a while just take a look under the hood because you, you know some of that stuff is pre-populated might. Might not be hurting you, but it might not be helping you either. Yeah. And so that's one of those. Like, you don't. You saw it a, a long time ago when people first started integrating. And I think for the most part they're gone, but it still happens. So. Yeah. I think there's a couple other issues on having the, those buttons on. If you have them there, I think they all take statistics. So getting your numbers and statistics. But on the other hand, if you have a if you have a whole lot of those buttons, they all take time to. Yeah, that's a really good point. Like, so that's the other end of this of, of, of maybe removing your social buttons. You have all these iframes that are loaded, well, and it's really, really like very guy was talking about this. And like you're talking about like the time, it, like sometimes those iframes load in front of your content, so your users would like they'll see you share this, but they're they're waiting for the content to come. You know, like so they kind of take over. Um, so there are other, other technical details about that. Um, well, another thing related to SEO, and I'm not again, I'm not sure how this impacts, but um, sometimes you, you or you can install Facebook comments on your blog pages, alternative to Discus or WordPress comments or your built-in comment system. Um, that that could be a, a way that when people are having conversations on your site, they're also having a conversation on Facebook. It's there. there. I, you know, I, w I would look into that. I, I personally have had some mixed reviews with that. It really depends on the client and the audience uh, with it because obviously, you know, it's, it's awesome that somebody commented on you know, your, your post about party planning, but if I'm friends with you know, Norm uh, and I might see that that pops up in my feed that you know, he's talking about party planning, but it has no relevance to me, I'm not going to go look at it. But I mean, if you have a, a, a community that's already, you know, active, you know, on your Facebook page, it's just coming to see what you're posting. I think the commenting has helped, um, but for the case to be made that it's going to attract other people to come to it, um, I kind of see less people just showing up on your Facebook page because they saw one of their friends comment. Yes, yeah. and when you do that, you, you lose control of that content a little yeah. bit. You don't own it. It's on it's on Facebook, and um, you may have issues moderating it if, you, if that's a concern. Um, and then I guess I know we're getting pretty short on time here. Like the final thing that I definitely want to leave with you is copy what other people are doing. <laughs> I mean, if you see something that you like that somebody's doing, I mean, don't like you know, you know, don't play dress. But if, 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 if a strategy or, or something looks cool, you like the way they're they're formatting a post or or a picture, do it. I mean, it, it, if if you think it's right for your audience and it works for you, just try it out. And then yeah, experiment because. All the, this stuff is constantly changing, and you know, um, you know, strategies are changing. Panda, whatever, or Penguin, whatever. Is, is, you know, uh, Panda was another one. Sorry, that's why I got a, a Google update. So I mean, definitely like just get your hands dirty and experiment. Um, 
yeah, building a blog is really exciting because you see the traffic grow and you're like, oh yeah, I got 50 more hits this month. And then, and then it's like 500 and then you're like, wow, I can't believe this. So it's really exciting to see see things grow and and you know you're not you're not going to probably leave this room and do every single thing all at once, but you know take it take it in chunks and as you build it as you grow it, you can see like what what is working and maybe what's not. So.